Here we go. So hi everybody, how's everybody doing tonight, huh? For the next eight minutes to go well, I really need you on my side. Thank you guys. Have a great night. All right guys, thanks for coming out to Tommy on the next night. And you got a big round of applause for yourself, sing it out. Hi, camera. Hi. My first set in comedy was an accident. I had been watching open my comedy for a year, you know, trying to make friends. And then one of my friends told me how he was struggling to write jokes and how he thought it'd be super funny if he wrote a set for me that was really manly and I would write a set for him that was really girly and we would perform each other's sets. Um, so when I went to that open mic, he ended up not being there, um, but I still had the set list of all these jokes, and so the person running the mic was like, hey, go up and try it if you want, and so I did, and I got a chuckle, and it was the best feeling I'd ever felt. It was, it was like doing heroin for the first time, you know, and uh, I was hooked, and I've been here ever since. It, it just feels like everybody's waiting for me to mess up, and if it goes well, then they're pleased. I'm watching Last Comic Standing, they're like, Mom, you should do that. He was super sweet, and I just thought, my son thinks I'm funny. I should try stand-up. What does doing stand-up feel like? I don't know. Sometimes it feels really great, like effortless, where you're just like, it's just flowing, and it's just out of you, and, you're, and then you get off, and you're kind of like, well, you wake up from a blackout, and you're like, what happened? Was it good? Uh, and then sometimes it's like, eh, awful the most gut-wrenching experience is like being kicked in the dick a hundred times anchorage alaska is a town that wants to be a city so bad if we can have a stand-up scene then anybody can If I had to describe the comedy scene here in Anchorage, it's like 12 to 16 people at any given time performing at open mics. That's almost exclusively localized in the oldest street in Anchorage, Spinard, inside the world famous Chilkoot Charlie's. How would I describe Chilkoot Charlie's? An antique log cabin. We have something in common, we're both relics. If you're ever in Anchorage, Alaska, you got to go to the part of town they call Spinard, where there's a rockin' little joint called Choku Charlie's. Now, Choku Charlie is a legendary Alaskan character who makes Paul Bunyan look like a puny wimp. Let's go inside and see if we can find him. My name is Mike, and Coots is my place. My job here is to put a smile on your face. These are my bartenders, you just can't beat them. Now's your chance to come in and meet them. Chill Coots, Chill Coot Charlie's. Down at Chill Coots, Chill Coot Charlie's. Greg Chaley asked me uh, a couple weeks ago, he said, would you, uh, would you trade all the partying that we did in Alaska in return for being able to remember the stories? And we both agreed, no, we would have done the party. I'm the guy they all call greedy. I'm really kind of mellow, though I look a little shady. This little town is like my backyard. Now I'm thinking about running for Maris Bernard. Six, seven shots on stage and three beers and you know, scream fests and riffing and silly things. I remember having the bouncers handcuffed me to a pipe over the stage once and had midgets shave my ass. That was part of my set that night. I don't, I wasn't spending a lot of time in a notebook. I am the warden for this crew. We cheat the other guy and pass the savings on to you. My name is Doran, and I've got to say that Coots is the greatest bar in the USA. You just, you outgrow it or you die. Uh, but at that time, my act was dumb enough and 
dick joke rich enough that it worked for that crowd. Uh, hey, welcome to Coot's uh, comedy open mic. Now, uh, give me a time, especially if you're new, uh, you'll be like, oh, I gotta go up on stage soon. Your tummy will get rumbling because you're a little bit nervous. And you're like, oh, I think I got the scoots. Uh, and you're gonna have to poop. There's no one in here. Okay, so these will be the first bathrooms you see uh, if you have to poop real bad. Uh, and so you'll come in this door. Uh, as you can see, uh, not a very good uh, pooping environment. Uh, there's no doors. That one's got urine in it. So most people would be like, I don't want to poop in here. But there's a secret. There are places in Coots uh, you can poop with some semblance of normalcy. Now there's this bathroom here. Uh, it's a little bit nicer because it has a stall door you can close. But it's still uh, very clearly a prison toilet. But you know what? Uh, this is all just a distraction. Let me just take you straight to where you should poop. Okay, hold on. Maybe, maybe this will be open. Alright, the birdhouse is closed. <laughs> uh, but the birdhouse is where you would want to poop. I don't know why I started the open mic at Coots, other than that I do like open mic. The open mic should be treated the same as any live performance. You should be able to, to not have the TVs blaring. Uh, the crack of pool balls is a little distracting. Uh, karaoke and darts are both killers to open mic. I promise not to text. Talk on the phone. Talk on the phone. Or any other douchebaggery that we hate. And then we had rules. You know, you had to do your time. And if you went over, then that was going to reflect poorly on next week, you being in there. And it just built up over time. And the beauty about Chilkoot Charlie is was that it was early enough that we just needed to have something going on in the room. And whether it really made money or not, it was just the bridge to what was gonna come in, and then the band would start to play. <laughs> the advice I've always given is just find the shittiest Dank his bar and ask the owner, what's your worst night? And then if he says Mondays, go, I will make Mondays your second worst night. All right, well, I don't have to be here, but I'm here, so there's that. I don't know why I keep coming to these things. This is not making me better as a comedian, if anything. This is just wasting my fucking time. I'm Damon. Just Damon. If Beyonce has one name, I only need one name too. So there's that. Being a black person doing a comedy is weird, mainly because I do things like call people white devils. And there are a lot of white people here. So they all assume that I'm talking to them. But I feel like if the shoe don't fit, give it the fuck back. Wait, my bad. Not that kind of documentary. Uh Very diverse group of white people. I like this. <laughs> I feel very at home. I'm black every day, um, except on Thursdays. Like, yeah, I just stay home. That's how you avoid the oppression. I just, I just don't let anyone see you. That's how you do it. I say that I'm staying home to be black, but it's really to get my money's worth of my rent. Like, I can't. It's fucking eight ninety five to live in a studio. Are you fucking shitting me right now? I don't. This is it San Francisco, Anchorage. What are you what are you saying to me right now? It's not even that nice. Like poor people tell me my apartment is nice, but that means nothing. <laughs> it means nothing to me. There'll be some nights, and I get that I'm not the funniest of us, but there'll be some nights where I'm like, I know for a fact that I was on fire kind of thing, and because I said white people, people didn't laugh. I know you were waiting for me to say white people, so you had a reason not to laugh. I'm not saying anything wrong. Eating the asshole. <laughs> yeah, icky. Anyway, they enjoy their assholes being played with by their girlfriends. Now, do I think they are gay because they enjoy the wonders of their prostate? No, it'll make you holler for a dollar, girl. Like, <laughs> I know, I truly know. I think they're gay because they told me, another grown man, that things are in your asshole. What are you, what are you doing? Everyone knows the rule. You're gay now. What are you, what are you, what are you saying to me? 
You have to cut down a tree to get back to the other side. Like, that's how you're not gay anymore. I didn't own an act, so I just, I'm gay now. I just kind of took the title and moved on about my business. Comedy is this kind of art form where you can just do it. There's no gatekeeper. You know, if you are gonna perform at a coffee shop, you need to at least know how to play guitar. Maybe you've written a poem, but with open mic, there is absolutely no barrier to get started. You just have to sign up. My name's George Faust. If you want the whole real name, it's George Harry Faust Jr. And what do I do? I'm retired. I'm a man of leisure, man of frustration, man of a lot of worries, but I try to keep a smile on my face and live life. So yeah, I'm German and I'm a comedian. Tell me how much sense does that make? Nine, nine, nine. Nine, nine. And I was a street performer at the Saturday Market doing juggling and unicycling, and I was pretty successful with that, and I went all over the state doing juggling shows, and I made pretty good money doing it. But stand-up's been a bigger challenge for me. When I first got up on stage, I felt like I didn't deserve to have people listen to me, but you know, now I do. I, I've gotten to the point I, I don't care. I just do what I do. So yeah, I'm 71 flipping years old. Can you believe that, man? No. I can't yeah. either. In case you're wondering, yes, I'm happy to admit, yes, I have screwed all your grandmothers. <laughs> I screwed all your grandmothers, la 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 I think my best show I ever done was last year during the comedy festival, the first awesome comedy festival put on by Cass Smiley and all the hard work. I'm Cass Smiley. I'm the producer founder of the Alaska Before You Die Comedy Festival. Before I got into comedy, I was a folk singer. Chick. I was just a girl singing songs about her boyfriend at the bar. My love for you is like AIDS because I'm caught in a once and now I got it for life. My love for you is so alarming as like Lorraine a Bob with a kitchen knife. Oh shit. You guys are laughing at my shit until now. They're like, that is not funny, bitch. It just keeps it. Move on. <laughs> the AK comedy scene is fucked up. One, there are no comedy clubs here. There is no scene. Every show you see is produced by someone who actually likes the art form of comedy. Hi, my name is Ben Farley, and I'm throwing one of the dankest shows in town uh, at the right here at the writers' block. Usually, teen angst music used to be like, and I, and fuck you, mom, and fuck you, dad. Fucking get in my own car, and aren't you glad? Moving to Brooklyn. <laughs> Nowadays, you can't really do that at 17 when you gotta live with your parents for another six years. <laughs> Awkward breakfast. What's it like producing comedy in Anchorage? I, it takes knowing people. It takes boots on the ground, just like almost any you know small town. You can't just put out a flyer and expect people to get there. You gotta go talk to people. Your first couple shows are the easiest because it's like every, you got friends that really want to see you succeed. They want to support you. Um, it's your shows two years in <laughs> that really sh show you who your friends are. Yeah. All right, guys, who's ready for an autograph? Yeah! yeah. Where'd Ben get all these kids? Because <laughs> he, he drives that car and they don't fit in there. <laughs> Two, the comedians are really fucking funny, but they have nowhere else to go. They have no ambitions, no, no drive. There's no incentive to do good. Uh, my name's Chris Goldman and I've been doing comedy here in the Anchorage scene for like 10 years. My band broke up and I still wanted to some kind of fucking crave some kind of attention so I started doing this and you don't have to share a drink tab with uh, other alcoholics it's all just you doing comedy um, how seriously do you take doing comedy mm, uh, <laughs> I've been in this comedy scene for 10 years so 
that's as serious as I've gotten. And that's the funny thing. I mean, we call ourselves comics, but it's anyone can sign up and get paid the same drink ticket that the rest of us do. So, you know. But at some point, we all feel like we're something better than that, right? Don't we? But it's not like a respected art or anything either. The Wheel of Fire! Watch in amazement as 10 of Anchorage's most foolhardy comedians attempt to perform stand-up comedy under the influences of incredibly hot sauces and peppers. All right, here we go, here we go. If I get milk, I'm lactose intolerant, so it's not explosive diarrhea. It's supposed to... Sh shut the fuck up. <laughs> supposed to do that and then tell these people jokes? Yeah, right. or you can yell at them like Cass did. That's I fine, too. Yell at them. They seem to be into that. Bitch, you don't got my stomach. Don't tell me what to do. Have you felt this shit in your mouth? I'm afraid. Fuck you. Fucking sweating and shit. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. What made you want to do comedy? Uh, I've always been kind of funny and telling jokes. And then I did an open mic at Rum Runners and, and did pretty well. Okay, Rum Runners, that was where uh, a, a core of us did get our start there and it was it was it was pretty rad i'd like to say it was a it was kind of like a pirate ship number two three three there's no fucking stage time nowhere in the town unless you create it yourself or you convince a bar to let you go steal a microphone and yell at a bunch of people who are just trying to eat or drink a beer in peace we're here at the um, hard rock cafe in anchorage alaska for the save the best for last friday comedy show hosted by irene shockville and um, it's supposed to start at 7.30, and we are, I think at this point, 10 minutes away from the show, supposing to start. And uh, they were right when they said I didn't have any fans. But you know what? I think that bartender and server are really going to get a great show tonight. <sighs> I'm feeling you, funny. You still going to go up? Oh, yes. <laughs> at the very least for the documentary. I just want to get the shot of someone really giving it their all for stand-up comedy in front of a room of chairs. Oh, what I do still to this day, and I watch it for many different reasons, right now it's the reality. I watch the Maury Povich show. Yep. Best reality you ever find. But watch a girl test like five guys for her kid, and it's not one of them? <laughs> That's reality. You can't fake that face. Sorry, that was a very old time movie. <sighs> Fun. I could be home with my family. Hey, let's start a comedy show. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Hey. Don't talk to me. <laughs> it's a pretty big relief to not have to go up because the only thing sadder than bombing in front of a lot of people is bombing in front of nobody. Let's all well, get up. <laughs> stand up. Yeah, all we have to do is stand up. And we have to walk. Just about right here. I want to do an impression for you, okay? This is my impression of someone walking into the show. Uh, if you want to do a road gig, you gotta drive like 600 miles into the wilderness in like scathe being yelled at by a giant woman named Carol wearing a blanket who looks like a Muppet man in a suit just to tell your jokes for a tip bucket full of sweaty $1 bills you gotta split with the six other comics in the car. I went on vacation back in January to Hawaii. It was awesome. I went snorkeling. So there I am, we have to take a boat like an hour and a half. Fucking, I'm gonna get in the water, you know? I've been breathing out of my mouth for a fucking hour. That's basically what snorkeling is anyway. So I'd fucking get in there, make about 10, 15 minutes, and then uh, I marked this off my bucket list. I actually puked into the water that I was swimming in. Just, blah, just chummed it up. Just, People were, you know, they're trying to swim to the fish, swam to me. I was the fucking 
buffet just spouting shit. Fish. And then like the, I give a good couple of heaves out and shit, and then the ocean kind of shifted me back, and, like, and I actually puke like a fish were on me like this. I'm like, oh, no, no, I need an adult here and shit. It was, yeah. Funny thing is, though, when I showed up, some nice lady saw I was in a little bit of trouble. Here, take a Dramamine. So one of them fish swallowed that. So that has to be, I don't know what that fish is going through to swallow the Dramamine. Like, oh my God, everything has stopped moving. Is there even a world anymore? What's going on, Fred? What's going on? Oh, you ate white boy puke. You shouldn't fucking do that. You don't know what's in that shit. Oh. And number five. Uh, it's Alaska. You know how hard it is to travel? You can't just drive to another state. You can't just go to the next town. You told all your jokes to every person in every little shit-ass bar in Anchorage, Alaska, all the towns. Guess what? Where are you going to go now? you got to hop on a plane and fly somewhere else. <laughs> hey, Chris, where are we? Uh, we're at Asian Cindy's bed and breakfast. <laughs> okay, we're in Cindy's apartment. Yes. On Fairburn. Oh, Sleeping uh, on cots. Yeah. I thought you were fucking with me last night. Your snoring was just... It, it sounded exactly like this. Ah! 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 It's like nobody fucking even breathes that fast sleeping. She was fucking with me. And so... Uh, and then you stopped. And then it was the pet. And then it was when I... <laughs> And he like shifted and then it was back to your normal like <sighs> Tell us the story of Before You Die. Um The whole festival is kind of birthed out of this like awful, morbid idea of like before you die. Come to Alaska before you die. Perform at Coots before you die. Uh, make new friends, summer camp before you die. Yo, do y'all be going to Canada? <laughs> Why? Like, I feel like I feel like there's a percentage of y'all who stay in Alaska because you can't drive to Washington because they don't let people with DUIs into Canada. <laughs> and the reason that I say this is because I'm not allowed into Canada. <laughs> stuck here, bitch. I, I gotta take a boat. <laughs> How are you feeling about it so far now that you've committed to making another year? Yeah, I, I feel like I had to commit because people were like, it went so well, you have to do it again, right? I feel like this year it will be less stressful because a lot of the uh, mystery that gave me anxiety before I kind of know now. It's going to be the same formula. It's punk rock. It's DIY. It's Alaskan. It's going to be dirty and fun. So tonight what we're doing is we're having a production meeting for the Alaska Before You Die Comedy Festival and we're going to watch some submission videos, check out some comics, submission packets, go through one by one and start making some cuts. Uh, I, I love those two. Have you ever seen documentaries, you know? Like, uh, but I realized if I was alive in the 70s, it would not have been for long. <laughs> This is all very funny. We're just dead inside. I was about to say that. <laughs> Are you planning on doing shows elsewhere, like other than Coots? I would like to, yeah. So, like, you want to do a Black Sheep show? And yeah. Then... yeah. I'm Angie Stubbs, and I run a Black Sheep comedy. And we um, host rooms. We bring it to our comics in town or out of state. Stop laughing at me. Can have a, a stage to perform. First of all, before I say anything else, let me just say I'm a big supporter of female sports. Can we give a big hand for women playing sports? Thank you. I love it. Because just like my stand-up comedy, nobody watches it on purpose, but they keep doing it. And I really appreciate that about them. So support them when you can. It's a clean comedy show. Like, and not and I always tell people at the beginning, it's clean. Um, it doesn't mean it's church comedy. So don't be offended if there's something, because have, we have a, a lot of friends that are going to churches and I go to church, so a lot of the people in this room are churched people. So I try to actually tell them, almost coach that room, and say, hey, we're not gonna get offended tonight, right? You guys know you're in a bar, okay? So we're gonna have a good time. 
But then I coach all of us and say, but guys, let's remember, we're not going to say anything overtly sexual. We're not going to say anything cussing. Let, and so it's kind of like we're all agreeing to have the same stage. But yeah, it's a clean comedy open mic, which is totally different from any of the open mics in town. You make it on Facebook. I don't know. What do you guys think? You've seen all the other comics saying. What do people usually say? What's, what do people say to stand up? Um, Talk about your five kids and stuff. My five kids. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm only 24. I'm not old enough to have any kids. Uh, Talk about your lack of sex. <laughs> That's the thing. She's better than me. Son of a gun. Excuse me. Clean comedy. Clean comedy. We're doing clean comedy tonight, folks. I, uh... You want a good show, I think first, it has to be your room. Do not walk into a room and feel intimidated by the venue and not rearrange stuff. I walked into a place one time that was set up like cafeteria style. So many people did so much work for this and I spent an hour and a half destroying that room and I didn't care. And we had a great show. We sold actually more tickets, sold out, but we only had 75, but the room felt beautiful, packed, and they were so much happier. You know how miserable that'd be to sit like you're gonna go like eat hot lunch. <laughs> I am clearly that lesbian comedian. <laughs> Mostly the jean jacket. It's, I got a jean jacket because I thought it looked cool. Then I realized I'm 34. I can't be wearing this anymore. 34 with a jean jacket. You know what that means. Uh, my girlfriend and I are going to be getting married as soon as she emancipates herself from her parents. Right? Okay. Oh, because uh, this is my office. I don't have Wi-Fi at home, so everything I do that is like website, email, um, I can email my phone, but a lot of it is like if I have to build anything on the website or anything to do with ticketing, I have to rush to the office. So if Jitters is closed, it gets kind of sketchy. Some headliners secured, I have some new cities to add to our roster, so I've been doing, doing a couple things. There's, there's been movement, which is good. Yeah, it, um, I feel I feel behind, but then I also feel like I'm on top of everything. It, like I said, it's a very dangerously cocky place to be. It can all come crashing down. Who knows? We uh, we mentioned that uh, eventually Alaska is going to get a case of COVID-19, the virus. We've had our first case identified today as a positive. I'm here today to announce that the municipality of Anchorage is proclaiming an emergency hunker down order. We're two weeks away from kickoff, as it were. Coronavirus effectively like destroyed the Before You Die Comedy Festival. Don't be selfish. Don't expose people to a disease. It doesn't mean that we can't have social interactions. Let's just do it in ways that, that acknowledge the reality of the, the situation we're in. Everyone, give me a few honks if you can hear me. All right, awesome. Awesome. That is how we express laughter. Uh, here at Driving Comedy is with honking. Hey, uh, my name's Alex, just Alex. I'm a stand-up comedian, and uh, I'm putting on driving comedy shows here in Anchorage, Alaska. I've got some roast jokes. So the, the, this is like the Comedy Central roast of Alaskan wildlife. Let's see, what we want to start with this. Oh yeah, hey, hey beluga whales. You look like you have a wake apnea. <laughs> that piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to a lot of uh, comedy nights at Coots, and this is the most people I've seen at Like, all we needed to do was to tell people they didn't have to come inside the Coots. <laughs> they flock here. Uh, I think this is great because there's no difference uh, in terms of how you're reacting to me between laughing and heckling. Like, nobody... Nobody can heckle me tonight. It's all the same. This is great. It's like a, it's like a tweet. I take that back. <laughs> Somebody can heckle me. I'm supposed to come out here for the Alaska Before You Die Festival at Coots. It got canceled because of coronavirus. I decided to come out anyway. Back in Las Vegas, I saw people going, oh, we're going to take our local show and put it online. It's like, well, as soon as someone's online, they're not local anymore. How do we offer the real thing that we offer? What, what are people trying to get out of going out to a comedy show? Part of it's going out. So I thought, how can we do that safely? My name is Greg. I am a local comic, and I am doing spacing. 
You gotta keep all the cars six feet apart. And as a kid, I was used to go to the drive-in. I looked up FM transmitters, went to Best Buy. It seemed there were lots of ways it would maybe not work, but it worked. COVID-19 really hasn't affected me that much. Like I shower a lot more now, ever since I ran out of toilet paper, but. Honestly, I think this is something that just for novelty's sake could live past the pandemic. You know, I'm not sure, maybe. Especially as the summer, people roll down their windows. It's a little bit, I don't know. I don't know. Once there's no reason to do it, I don't know if it survives. This is our first night back indoors inside Coots um, since the COVID quarantine happened back in March. So it's been three months. I'm excited to be back in Coots. At the same time, I'm terrified because this place is usually filthy. And before COVID, I was fine with it. Now. I'm, I'm taking a second look at all the filth and just wondering what diseases lie there. I feel like this is going to be a real shit show. I, I don't know, usually when I, when I host, I talk about current events and everything that's been in the news has been uniquely awful. I'm going to try hard just because it's my first night back and if I get COVID from this, I want it to be worth it. All right. Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Matt. I'm the host of this uh, comedy open mic here at Coots. This is the first time I've been here in three months. Um, I'm fine. You're gonna, I'm gonna unscrew the top of this thing and then you get a new sanitized top. I don't know. <laughs> Germs live on the tip. That's, um, you've never had herpes at the base of your penis. It's always at the top, so why not? The same with microphones. So. So yeah, that's how that works. So I'll just unscrew this and you get a freshly sanitized little mic head over there and you take it and then you put it on. I don't know, I hope we brought hand sanitizer. Does somebody have hand sanitizer? Because you should maybe have that. So, all right, I didn't, I didn't do this. This isn't my call. Anyways, without further ado, here he comes. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the FU 2020 show. Please welcome your host, Matt Jordan. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming. Hello. Hey. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Good evening and welcome to the FU 2020 show, where tonight we're going to take a look back at the hellscape that was the year 2020, a year so dark the creators of Black Mirror called it a little much. You're about to hear from some of Alaska's funniest comedians as they recap and roast the year. I mean, so the impetus for the online shows is really, you know, the apocalypse that's happening right now. Uh, you, you know, we're just alone and so out of practice and just itching to do anything, you know? Uh, so that's why I started the, um, the, the, the virtual comedy show, combining filmmaking and joke writing. Um, to be much more akin to something you would see, um, you know, on YouTube or SNL or something. You know, not that we're SNL writers, but uh, yeah, it's much more uh, sketch format. Hello. If you're watching this, then unfortunately for you, I'm dead. Since this is pre-recorded, I've had my dear friend, Gavin, fill in the information gaps. I've been assured you'll hardly notice. I'd like to thank you for joining us today at the prestigious Your Own Homes. Hope you guys in the mezzanine can hear from up there. I passed away on the floor. Take solace knowing I died doing what I loved, killing myself. No, I'm kidding. If I had to guess how I died, it would be by being multi-murdered. Like murdered by a group of murderers. A murder of murderers, if you will. In any case, my actual cause of death was... Choking on a Happy Meal toy. The choking hazard warning said ages one to four. She thought she was safe. Give a message to the people. Let's say George got up there, did the best he could. He had fun. And he looked clean. Best advice I ever got is I was a bigger open micer 
than the person I was talking to and I was giving him whatever advice and Joey Scazzola was there and he said, listen, don't give people advice because all you're doing is telling them how to be more like you. I mean, that's exactly right. So, yeah, don't give advice. And when you get advice, only take the stuff that you wanted to hear. I, uh, I got to meet Dave Chappelle once and it blew my mind. I think I said, uh, thank you for coming here to my town and doing what you do and giving uh, aspiring open mic comedians like me a chance to watch you work. And he shook my hand and he squeezed it and he said, you're not an aspiring comedian. If you get on stage, you're doing it and don't ever forget that. We have a good thing going. Like I'm not trying to be out on the road or anything. I'm just trying to be the funniest that I can be in a scene that shouldn't exist. I mean, so every time we get up on stage is a success. And the thing that keeps me coming back more than anything is the friendships. It's not so much the time where I get to perform, it's the people who I get to share the stage with. Well, you wanna know actually the truth? I've actually told a lot of people this. The difference between our scene and the scene in the nation, we actually are a family. Like, you guys are so familial. You guys do things together, you respect each other. I have felt very loved by all of you. I, I do love you. I love you guys, yeah. Get me so much and then I figured it out 